Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Anthony Julian from Cancana Resources. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Now, Cancana Resources is extremely fascinating to me because you're actually from the Sentient Group and now you're the CEO of Cancana. Is that correct? That's correct. And can you explain to our audience the joint venture deal with Cancana and Sentient Group and how that's set up? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of the new investment model that uh, private equity is following. And uh, Cancana brought the deal to the Sentient Group and it was structured really nicely. And essentially, because there wasn't enough funds, we had to put in the majority of the funds, which resulted in, in me becoming the CEO of Cancana. So under that operational model then, <coughs> Cancana is the operator and uh, controls the investment, and the major shareholder is private equity. Okay, that's very interesting to me. And of course, uh, our audience knows Christopher Ecclestone, our global analyst from London, who loves this story. He says you have some of the best manganese uh, in the world and, and specifically in Brazil. Can you tell us a little bit about your manganese? Sure. So in Brazil, all of the manganese deposits in the working mines are what's called sedimentary manganese, which is a pretty typical style. And it is the majority of manganese mines around the world. We've got a unique style of manganese called hydrothermal, and the key difference between the two is that hydrothermal will be the same tenor or grade at depth as it is at surface, whereas sedimentary, it runs out of that grade. So potentially, if the manganese price grows, you can have deeper mines than you could if you had sedimentary, because sedimentary will run out at some point. And of course, the actual property that you have, that you're focused on, you, you picked up two former producing properties, is that correct? That's correct. So two, they were in production, and, uh, and Cancana also had tenements that were adjacent. And that's what attracted us about the deal, because it was a contiguous uh, tenement package. And what really surprised us when we were doing our due diligence, manganese is used in steel. And so we had this mindset that, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this for steel. But uh, one of the customers was selling the majority of their products to the fertilizer business in Brazil. Well, and, and of course, to be a fertilizer, you have to have a higher grade. Yes, yes. So usually people have mines running at about you know, 38 to 44 uh, percent. This mine uh, was running at 50 percent plus, and the fertilizer guys need a minimum of 48 percent. But it's not just about the grade. They also need none of the nasties in there, no lead, no cadmium, no, you know, all of those things, phosphorus. So the hydrothermal style has very low um, elements uh, in it, which makes it suitable for food products. And of course, you're taking advantage right now of the market that loves producers. And I understand that you'll actually be able to be doing some small scale production that will help pay for your exploration. Did I read that correct? You're, you're absolutely right. So those businesses were doing around about 10 to 15,000 tons per annum. Uh, when we took over the plants, they weren't in very good shape and they definitely weren't at Canadian standards. So we've spent the past 12 months uh, rejigging the plants, making them safe. But we just announced a couple of weeks ago, uh, we've used Orsenco to do an engineering audit. We're going to improve one of the plants to 50,000 tonnes. That will j basically bring the business to break even, excluding the exploration budget. One of the very nice aspects of Cancana Resources, I noticed you're putting out very timely news releases, and you put out a very significant one, an update on your exploration just a couple of weeks ago. Can you talk to us a little bit about this? Sure. So, um, just going back to the, the sedimentary versus hydrothermal. So when we were in the market a couple of months ago, we, we didn't have proof that it was hydrothermal. So one of the key things that we had to prove is that we had hydrothermal, which meant we had the same grade at depth as we do at surface. And that's, that's what that announcement's about. The way we did it, we did it uh, in two ways, aerial geophysics. So we basically flew 70% of the land package and we did a scout drill program of 2,000 metres. And one of the, we've been extremely, I wouldn't say lucky, but we've got good people on the ground who got their calibrations right. And what the drilling and the trenching and some of our mining operations have shown is that the aerial geophysics, when it says a structure is in a certain location, guess what? It's where it says it is. So it's exciting for us. So we now know we've got 211 kilometers of strike. And over the next couple of years, we've just got to prove out the size of this resource. Well, in reading your news release, and of course you also have a, an excellent IR professional, uh, he uh, kept uh, 
uh, stating that uh, the results actually had exceeded all your expectations. Can you be specific about what you mean or what he was talking about? Yes. I mean, I, I can't really talk about what we think the future size of the resource is, but it's a lot more than we thought. I mean, to put it in perspective, 211 kilometres of strike. We know it runs the same grade to at least 50 metres. So if you run some basic calculations, you can see that this is potentially a world-class resource. The next few years, we'll pick that up. That exceeded my expectations. But the cherry on the cake was uh, we, we are still doing the small-scale mining operations to support the plants and the business. And that, that's what's called colluvial mining, which very simply, you dig a couple of metres down, there's cobbles that sort of sit at the top of the surface, and then we wash those cobbles and, and sell them. What's happened is the aerial geophysics in one of our mine sites said that there's a primary vein there. The geologists discovered it, and the vein is in such a structure, it's in friable rock, so it's basically very loose and easy to break down. We're now processing primary ore, and we didn't expect to do that for another year or two. So what's your timeline looking like right now? What should we expect as shareholders? There's two timelines. So you've got our exploration timeline, we've got our operational timeline. So we announced the uh, 50,000 tonne per annum plant. That should be in production by mid to late next year. Then it's all about proving up the resource. So we have SRK coming down towards the end of this year so that we can start building our 43101, which we plan to publish next year. And essentially, we believe that we'll have enough resource to go to feasibility study by 2020. So, so that's where we're going. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for giving us an excellent overview of Cancana resources today. You're welcome.